Hello friends! Welcome to part one of the Cinderella dress series. In this video, we will be making the chemise. As I have discussed before, the undergarments of an outfit, costume, or historical replica are imperative for achieving the proper silhouette. We are beginning with the chemise, which in history was the base undergarment for centuries. It can also be known as the shift. The one I am designing is meant to be used in multiple costumes, so I had to shorten the sleeves. And based on the behind-the-scenes pictures of Cinderella's dresses, you can see her chemise peeking out of her work dress and observe that the top portion is gathered. And in another picture of her chemise, you can see that it is also gathered at the waist and underbust, hence the reason why I will be basing my design off the Marie Antoinette's chemise a la reine. Due to copyright reasons, I will not be showing you the reference pictures that I used, but I will provide a link down below. So, a brief history of the chemise a la reine. It was made popular by Queen Marie Antoinette in the 1780s, and it looks something like this. It's heavily gathered. I mean, normally they would have like more poofy sleeves, but um, I had to design my chemise with shorter sleeves in order to accommodate with multiple dresses that I'm making it for. They are essentially really long pieces of fabric, which are gathered at the waist and uh, the waist and underbust, and they're just gathered until it just becomes fitted to your body and then you cut away the neckline and then there are usually closer closures in the front with drawstrings. My particular design is in no way intended to be historically accurate. This is just inspiration I'm taking because I chose the chemise a la rain because it was the I, I thought it looked really pretty and I wanted to do something like that for my design. Now these beautiful dresses are normally made with copious amounts of lightweight cotton fabrics that are typically very thin and sheer. However, it is very hard to find any kind of sheer cotton or cotton lawn where I live and I'm just going to work with what I've got. And what I've got is this um, combed Egyptian cotton. This is an old bed sheet, but it's a really, really, really good one. And so that's why I chose to use it for this project. Um, I'm hoping that it won't be um, too thick. It's kind of a medium weight cotton, and it is probably going to be very th densely gathered. So I'm going to use a little bit less of this fabric in hopes to reduce some of the bulkiness and density. So the sheet I am using is very strange. It's 94 inches by 101 inches, so it's got this weird square shape. And um, I've been just trying to work out ways of how to cut this. I mean, this is what happens when you just use what you have. Let me just remove the distracting stuff. But anyway, I'm going to end up with a very, very large piece and a very, very small piece. But I've worked out that I will have enough fabric, or at least I should. I'm not the best at math, but I I think uh, uh, using addition is is easy enough. So if my calculations are correct, then I should have enough fabric to gather into this very tightly gathered chemise. First, measure from the top of your shoulder to the floor so you know how long to make your fabric tube. I had to cut two sections of fabric, but when joined together they became 54 inches by 140 inches. Then I just gave them a quick press with the iron and I sewed them together.
one of the edges still had the hem on it, so I trimmed it off, but I did not discard it because I thought it would make a good drawstring. Then finish the seam with a zigzag stitch. Nextly, I did a rolled hem on both the sides, and these will be the ends that close in the front. Then I cut six strips of fabric that were 140 inches long and about one to one and a half inches wide. I sewed two of those on the fabric where the waist and underbust measurements were. I could have used twill tape, but I didn't want to be wasteful, and I also didn't have any twill tape. Next, I threaded my drawstrings through the casings. Once those were gathered, I tied them to the dress form, dress form and began pinning the top gathers into place. This took a couple attempts before I was fully satisfied with the pleats. I cut out a piece of paper to act as the negative space of my neckline, so I could use it as a guide to mark out a pretty symmetrical neckline. Okay, so I have a quick little life hack here. Because this fabric is so, it's not a very thin fabric, this is a heavier cotton, um, I can't exactly see where, where I need to pin my arm side because I cannot see the dress form underneath. So what I'm doing is I took one of my vests here, and I'm using my vest to pin out where the arm side should be. Um, as you can see, the lines are not completely matched up because you want to make sure that you use a vest that has a tighter arm size so you're not getting like a big like weird hole because you do not want like your armpit to show or anything because a lot of modern day arm sizes are cut really low. So find a vest that at least works. This one was a little bit low so I took measurements um, like where I needed to cut it a little tighter, so there's about like a two inch gap here, a one inch gap here. So yeah, just um, take that into account. And I hope this tip is helpful because it's really helping me. It also is helping me get the arm size to be perfectly symmetrical. You will then sew a basting stitch on the front, back, and arm size, and cut away the fabric on just the arm size. I unpinned all the gathers and put a permanent stay stitch in the back and shoulders. This stay stitch was done by machine. Because the front of the chemise still needs to open, we will need to put in more drawstrings. So carefully undo the basting stitch and pin along the places where that stitch ran. And then I basted that line again and cut the fabric one and a half inches above that stitch. Pin down the fabric to make uh, the channel matching up the ends with the basting stitch. After sewing down this channel, I removed the basting stitches and threaded in my drawstrings.
the strings should poke out of the end, so you're going to want to anchor those in place with a diagonal machine stitch. After that was done, I removed the rest of my basting stitches and trimmed away any excess fabric. I then used some of my leftover fabric strips to bind the seam at the shoulders and hem the back of the dress. I used a hand fell stitch for the shoulders and I machine stitched the strip in place that was on the back. And then I trimmed away the excess fabric and then I began to fell down that strip to the inside of the dress. At the end of the live-action Beauty and the Beast, Emma Watson is seen wearing her chemise, and hers has these cap sleeves, and I wanted to add that just in case I wanted to recreate that costume. So I just traced the rounded top part of a sleeve pattern and did a rolled hem on the edge of the sleeves and attached the sleeves like normal. I hemmed the arm size with more binding. And the last thing I had to do was sew up the front of the dress up to the drawstrings so that it wasn't open in the front. And with that, the chemise is finished. <laughs>